Yoda Koto Katoa, welcome back to the Black Jersey. My name is Max and I'm this channel's host. Today's video is going to be a prediction on the 2023 Rugby World Cup for the All Blacks, and I'm going to follow this video up with a World Cup squad prediction for Ireland, though you'll probably wait till next week as I'm not going to upload this weekend due to my wedding anniversary. Um, thank you very much to my patrons and all of my returning subscribers for your constant support. Um, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you give me the subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't ever miss my new videos. Um, I'm going to kind of go over all the picks who I think Ian Foster will select. Um, this isn't a video based on my own opinion. Um, this is kind of like my prognostics of who Fozzie is going to pick and um, why he's going to pick them in the squad. I'll start off with the hookers to begin the video as usual and it's pretty obvious um, Summer Sony Talkie is going to be in there. Um, he ranks second on the hooker depth chart, but recently he has overtaken Cody Taylor and Dane Coles as the first choice hooker in the eyes of Fozzie. Um, Taylor's line out throwing hasn't been going as well as usual, so it is possible we could see Talkiaho off the bench in case Taylor's throwing isn't going the best. But I do think Taylor still has a lot to offer because he does have the most minutes under his belt for any hooker under Foster. Um, he's now racked up 1,000 minutes of test rugby during the Foster era. He's still a very hard carrier, a rough tackler, and he's always going to be trusted behind a driving wall, so I do think Taylor is young enough to go to the World Cup. Um, a lot of people have been getting behind a bit of a Cody Taylor hate train, and I think it's a bit ridiculous. It's a bit overhyped because, simply put, a lot of people are mad at Taylor for the one line-out throw that, yes, it did indeed cost the game against Argentina, but experience, as I've said about other players before, doesn't grow on trees. On the note of Dane Coles though, I think he's probably racked up too much experience to the point where he's played professional rugby rather beyond his prime and so that's resulted in him playing just four tests this year. He's been well behind Talkiaho and Taylor for minutes so I do think yes indeed a Safal Almoa who is in the All Blacks 15 and still on Fozzie's radar is going to go to the World Cup. Um, Almoa has not played a test in 2022. He only has six overall at 25 years old but you've got to say his power running, his carrying, his line at throwing, they've all came through leaps and bounds, they've evolved so much. Almuwa's truly become a complete hooker and through an outstanding NPC season, um, Foster's not ready to give up on him just yet. He was indeed a selector for the All Blacks 15 and so if um, Almuwa can play very well for that side, um, it's pretty much guaranteed he's going to overtake Coles and go to the World Cup. Now to discuss the loose head props. My goodness, I think there could still be a bit more change over in this position, but I don't think that um, Tamwaiti Williams is going to force his way in just yet. Another young prop though who is absolutely going to the World Cup is Ethan De Groot. I was so grumpy when he got left out of the Ireland mid-year series in 2022, but look where he is now. He's the first choice, though he doesn't possess the most minutes on the depth chart. He's a hard carrier, he's a, ver he's a ferocious tackler, and of course he is devastating in the scrum and he has the quickest ruck speed of any loose head prop available. Aiden Ross seems to have been frozen out and is in the All Blacks 15 for the end of year tests. So off a Toonga Fassi as, um, as we saw at Eden Park when he came back from injury is likely to transfer all of his minutes under Foster from tight head over into loose head prop and keep George Bauer out. Though Bauer's share of the 
depth chart and Joe Moody's injury does mean that Bow is likely to remain in there as the third choice loose head. Joe Moody is scheduled to return early from his ACL, but being 34 years old, is he young enough to return from that injury? Sitting well behind Bauer for minutes and with DeGroote hot on his tail, I think it is indeed over for Joe Moody and George Bauer will go. Um, a lot of people are seeming to say Offa Tuunga Fasi is not the smartest player. I think he's looked after his body very well though. Even though he is injury prone, he still plays very well when he is fit, so that's how I think loose head prop is going to be. Over at tight head prop, Tyrell Lomax faced similar circumstances to DeGroote for the mid-year series, but he's returned as the first choice tight head prop. He's about to overtake Nepo Laulala on the depth chart, and he is very, very mobile, despite scrummaging that could perhaps use um, a bit of work. Um, I think it fits the game plan very much to have a guy with strong ruck speed and big shots in the tackle. Um, Laulala is most likely to stay around due to his long service to New Zealand rugby. Um, he's re-signed just for for one more year through to the end of 2023, so it would be quite appropriate if he could finish off his career with 50 tests and a World Cup appearance. Um, the youngster Fletcher Newell has pushed Angus Tarval back to the All Blacks 15, and at just 22 years old, um, there's a lot of improving that Fletcher Newell could do. Um, he seems to have potential that's got a very high ceiling. I think he probably got picked for the All Blacks a little bit too early, but in terms of his long-term development, I think that going for a World Cup is going to be very, very good for Fletcher Newell. Over to the locks, it's pretty obvious what's going to happen over there. Brody Vitalik is going to go due to his experience. He was World Player of the Year in 2014 and remains the youngest winner of the award to date. Sam Whitelock is also going to go. He's now racked up over 140 tests. He's all but set to overtake Richie McCaw as the most capped All Black of all time. And he's also pretty much certain to join Alan Wynne Jones as just the second player to pass 150 tests caps. Scott Barrett I think is probably going to remain a bench option due to Shannon Frizzell's performance as a blindside as of late. Barrett got to start against um, Ireland at 6 um, he also did so against England back in 2019, um, a test that we don't think we'll talk about over here. And obviously Barrett's been a lock for most of his career so he's the clear bench option. A bit of a message seems to have been sent to Patrick Tui Pilotu though, he's captaining the All Blacks 15 and Tupo Vai is um, the fourth lock for the main All Blacks team under Foster. Um, there has been a few occasions in which Vai hasn't come off the bench during All Blacks tests but with all the investment that's gone into him I think it's pretty safe to say he's going to go to the World Cup. Um, Josh Lord I can't say the same thing because Lord unfortunately has had a fair bit of injury problems. So I think that Lord will have to wait for 2024 to get a recall and that he will miss the World Cup. Vae on the other hand is going to be very destructive during the pool stages so I think he's pretty much certain to um, be in there in the wider training squad. We're now going to move over to the loose forwards. Um, I mentioned Shannon Frizzell earlier, he's likely to remain Foster's first choice as Foster always seems to want Sam Kane and Artie Savia going together with two open side flankers and a starting 15. You need either a third lock to start a six or you need a, um, a blind side, sorry, who's tall enough to be a very solid line out jumper. Shannon Frizzell, as you can see when I met him, is a very tall guy. He's six foot five. And so um, I think Frizzell is going to continue on. Though Akira Ioane's played more minutes at blind side for Foster, um, Frizzell Zell's court date in which he was found not guilty um, is possibly why Ioani was able to overtake him. Um, Frizzell, as he was not convicted, as he's playing well as of late, I think is going to be Fozzie's go-to. Though I would prefer Ioani, Scott Barrett's ability to cover six and lock may mean Frizzell is the only blind side as a specialist to go, as you do need your key decision maker at number eight to have a backup option. Um, Sam Kane, though, is captain. 
it's pretty obvious that Foster's gonna keep being loyal to Sam Kane if he stays injury free. Um, with, with 85 test caps at 30 years old, um, he's pretty much certain to get 100 if he keeps playing till the end of his contract in 2025. Um, as I said back when he was like 27 or something, if he signs past 2021, um, he's gonna get 100. It's looking all but certain at this point. Um, sorry to Dalton Papali'i fans, he's probably gonna go to the World Cup um, as another bench option um, with the power that he brings off the bench, the raw jackling ability, the big hits in the tackle. Um, Dalton Papali'i is gonna be a monster off the bench for the All Blacks in 2023. Um, he's um, just turned 25 as well, so just don't worry about the graphic over there. Um, there have been a few birthdays since I made the graphics for this video. Now at number eight, though Artie Savia started his career off as an open side, his power off the back of a scrum is just making him the first name on the team sheet every time, so I think it's safe to say he's going to go in there. Um, Hoskin Satushu seems to be the only player that Fozzie is willing to trust in the event that Savia is unavailable. For example, it was Satushu who started at number eight against the Wallabies, while Luke Jacobson hasn't been in here this year at all. A lot of people are going to cry in the comments about Cullen Grace, I'm sorry guys, but Grace needs to bulk up. Um, in the very similar way that I need to lose weight, hence why I'm on a keto diet. <laughs> But yes, um, Grace is just six foot three and 107 kgs. He doesn't have the size to dominate from number eight the way that Ardi Savia does. Though Savia is lighter than Grace, he's got a he's got a far higher body muscle percentage. Like you look at the guy and he's ripped. I'd hate to think of his body fat percentage. Probably less than seven percent. Satushu, on the other hand, compared to Grace, has a massive share of the depth chart compared to all the other options. Jacobson was staffed of minutes at eight, Peter Gasowakula was staffed at minutes, so Satushu, to be realistic, is the only backup choice for Savia, and number eight is more important than blindside, so that's also sorry to Akiriwani. Um, if I was picking, it would be nice to see someone like Miki Ali too, but there's just not enough time left, so Satushu, as I said, the only choice. We're now going into the backs and my goodness this is going to be very interesting. As you can see Aaron Smith is obviously going to be going as the first choice halfback for his third World Cup. Um, he's likely going to retire um, after the World Cup though as he is going to be 34 during the tournament and he'll turn 35 shortly after it. Um, there's not a lot of minutes below him for Christie and for Fakatava who I think are going to go but TJ Petanara and Brad Webber they are available available on the outside so if Smith is injured I actually think Brad Webber is likely to go in and start though he won't be in the squad because of um, Foster's interesting rugby IQ Finlay Christie has proven himself a very good bench option due to his combination formed with Bowden Barrett over at the Blues the fact that those two have that raw cohesion together thanks to constant selection as a pair makes Christie the ultimate bench option in Foster's eyes whereas Falau Fuck Katava is the future of the jersey. Um, I've been screaming about that for a very long period of time. He does need to get a start against Japan um, to begin our end of year tour, but long story short, this guy is the future and you've got to do that long term planning because Foster um, he seems to be thinking about being the All Blacks coach for longer than the World Cup so Fakatava is almost definitely gonna go. Having been Smith's apprentice at the Highlanders gives him just that valuable insight about being a regular starter at test level so that's gonna need to go to the World Cup. Over at first five Richie Mwanga, pretty obvious that one there. He's been outstanding, he's got over 70 points this season, while he does lead the first five depth chart for Ian Foster. Um, he's not playing as well as he perhaps has in the past with Joe Schmidt um, as the attack coach, forcing him to do a bit too much kicking away of the ball, but it's okay, Mwanga still has the tactical vision to unlock defence lines. He's got the raw just ability to communicate, spot gaps, organise the team, whereas Bowden Barrett, as I said previously, is very experienced, so he's going to go. Um, his combination with Christie off the bench is always very, very good for the sake of cohesion, and with over 100 tests, 
I've said it so many times throughout the video, experience does not grow on trees. I'm gonna um, throw a bit of a um, a bit of a dodgy call over here though. Steven Pietafita may have been selected by Foster for 2022's end year tour, Damien McKenzie may be in the All Blacks 15, and I think that after having a bit of a think about it um, for a few weeks or so, McKenzie's a guy that they know what they're gonna get out of, so they're preserving him in the long term, whereas they do need to look at a guy to be a proper call-up option. Um, I do think McKenzie is gonna go to the World Cup because of the value he brings as an impact player, whereas during the pool stage, his versatility is gonna be very nice, um, depending on who's a bit jet-lagged, who's a bit sore, things like that. So yes, I do think Damien McKenzie does have the chance to come back in due to all of this. He is gonna be getting pretty old though, so I wouldn't be surprised if the World Cup saw him play his last test. We're now going over to the midfield. David Havili has got to be the first choice second five. Quintu Pai is going to have less than two months to get himself fit for the World Cup. So um, in my depth chart for second five, I have invalidated the minutes to Quintu Pai's name, which is absolutely gutting due to his promise. Um, Jack Goodhue's also had ACL surgery yet again, so I've had to do the same for Jack Goodhue. Due to combination building being such a huge factor in World Cup selections, I do think it's quite safe to say that Havili is going to remain in a 12. A lot of people People with misinformed opinions are going to cry about Geordie Barrett, but let's face it, fullback is more important than second five and you need that defence from the back of the field, so Havili will remain at 12 in Foster's eyes. Havili brings in the ability to be a fifth kicker for Foster, whereas he's peerless in his ability to make the distribution calls and uh, come along and be that second receiver for Mawonga. The fact that he's played with Mawonga for six years is so, so good for combination building, whereas he's been repeatedly selected in combination with Rico Yuani in the midfield since 2021. Um, Rico Yuani is of course gonna go at just 25 years old. He's got 56 test caps experience, doesn't grow on trees. The guy's ridiculously quick. He's a strong defender. He's a strong passer now, though his kicking game is limited, his attacking options with ball in hand, he can just go either way, he can step you, he can fend you off, he can take it into contact, he can do it all. Anton Leonard Brown has just returned from injury and with Tupaya being out, Anton Leonard Brown is so, so vastly needed for this World Cup, it's pretty much safe to say he's guaranteed a spot due to experience, plus the fact that before he got injured he was having an absolute blinder of a Super Rugby season. The big losers in terms the midfield though are probably going to be Roger, Tui Vasashek and Brayden Enor. Um, it's run out of time for Tui Vasashek to really establish himself as a proper union player because simply put, he converted codes far too late. Brayden Enor as well just has not proven himself at test level and he doesn't really have a combination with anyone else in the second choice team. As Yawani and Havili are going to be the first choice players, you do have to think of people who are going to be able to combine with Leonard Brown at the pool stages, and so that is where Alex Nankival, a previous guest on my channel, comes into the equation. He's the only uncapped player I'm selecting for this video, and uh, he is indeed on Foster's radar, having been selected for the All Blacks 15. He's a strong runner of the ball, he's a strong passer, and he's a strong defender who can bench press over 160 kgs. At 25 years old, he's a pretty good age as well. He's been proven at club level, and with Tupaya out injured, he's going to have a massive amount of time to gel with Leonard Brown as World Cup preparation. So sorry to Tui Vasashek and Braden Enor, but time's run out of them. You've got to think about combination building and if anyone's gonna combine with Leonard Brown in the pool stages this is your man. To finish off the video we've got to talk about the outside backs and Caleb Clark is definitely gonna go there. He's a powerful winger who at um, 6 feet tall and 110 kgs is a really good option to clear rucks out wide. If a forward is a one man pot out there carrying the ball alone well then you've got a power winger out wide to clear rucks for them and of course with the power that Clark offers it'll 
allows you the option of a skip pass. The crash ball running from 12 is getting a bit out of um, out of date and stuff, and so with a skip pass out wide where fewer defenders are, you can definitely gain meters by crashing it up with Clark. Um, his high ball catching does need a little bit of work, but that's okay, it's why you have Geordie Barrett, the experienced player, in to support him. Geordie Barrett is absolutely going to go to the World Cup. He's got a massive share of minutes on the depth chart for fullback, more than twice as many as um, Damian McKenzie and Bowden Barrett. He's a magic defender, a magic passer, and his versatility, please, I've got no better words to describe Geordie Barrett than world class. I do think Leicester Fyinga Anuku does indeed still have a chance as well. Um, I think he's going to be the bolter except with a cap for the World Cup if you will. He was outstanding through Super Rugby but still hasn't quite got his chance at test level after a yellow card against Ireland and the return of Caleb Clark. He's pretty much just been in the same situation as Steven Petafeta where the team's um, lack of uh, of uh, continuity I guess I'll say has definitely done him a disservice it's okay though he's a winger he doesn't need a ridiculous amount of experience and as a like for like replacement a Clark I think it makes pretty much perfect sense to take him along as that backup power winger um, Will Jordan's obviously gonna go because he's an informed right winger with a kicking game a running game a passing game his defense does need work though so that's why he won't go to fullback his attacking though there's nothing you can't do with ball in hand. Seriously, this guy's ridiculously talented. It's unbelievable to watch him and he's going to set the tournament alight with amazing highlight reels. Another guy who's going to be able to do that is Sevu Reese. Reese has the seconds to most minutes at both 11 and 14 thanks to George Bridges' departure over to Montpellier in France. Reese is still going to be 26 years old for the World Cup. Um, that is getting a little bit old for a winger, but <laughs> because he was 22 for his first World Cup, he's going to be young enough to go to a second. It's very rare that an outside back makes it to two World Cups, but Sevu Reese, after changing his life around and becoming a man of God, I think is going to be able to make it happen. There we go guys, there's my World Cup prediction for 2023. Um, this is who Ian Foster is going to select, I believe. It's not my opinion. And um, it's a bit of a video version of an article I've done before. This has been a pretty long video, so I'm not going to drag it on any longer. I'm simply going to say thank you very much for viewing guys. Cheers, and I will see you next time.